The Republic has the dubious distinction of being recognized by Caesar as a worthy adversary and conflict with the NCR was inevitable. For Caesar, this was more than animosity or petty hatred. He sees himself as Caesar returning from his conquest of Gaul and the NCR as the corrupt Roman Senate. A textbook example of Hegelian dialectics, where the thesis and antithesis conflict, creating a synthesis when the conflict is resolved. When the Legion conquers the NCR, it will be transformed from a republic crippled by bureaucracy, corruption, and gridlock into a highly efficient military dictatorship. The Legion will become a standing army protecting all the citizens of the new empire and the absolute power of its dictator. Of course, the new California Republic was not willing to roll over and surrender. Following a series of skirmishes and smaller battles, including the destruction of Fort Aradesh out east, the Legion forced a confrontation. In 2277, the Legion faced the NCR at Hoover Dam, in what became known as the First Battle of Hoover Dam. Discovered by Ulysses, a fermentarius, the dam was a symbolic Rubicon. At the time, Caesar's 68 reformed tribes under the command of the Joshua Graham marched against the NCR garrison at Hoover Dam, in an attempt to take the strategic asset and river crossing. However, Graham's elite troops were drawn into a trap laid by Chief Hanlon of the New California Republic Rangers. As General Lee Oliver's soldiers held the line, Rangers and Army sharpshooters targeted their commanders, primarily Centurions and Decani, sowing chaos among the common legionaries. The Legate, unable to adapt to new strategies in combat, ordered his elite forces to punch through and pursue Rangers decimating his officers, the Rangers and 1st Recon sharpshooters executed a tactical retreat into Boulder City. Elements of the army and Rangers kept the Legion engaged long enough to allow the most experienced legionaries to enter the city. When they did, the Republic's forces pulled out of the city. Once most of them were safe, soldiers and rangers trapped behind legion lines had to be abandoned, they triggered explosives packed into the buildings in advance. Chief Hanlon's plan went off without a hitch. The exploding buildings acted as giant fragmentation bombs, killing and maiming most of the legionaries and leaving the rest in a state of shock, effectively crippling their offensive. The army and rangers followed the detonation with a counterattack pushing back and eventually routing the Legion forces and forcing the Malpais Legate to retreat from the camp back to the east of the Colorado River. Flanking attacks at Camp Golf and other camps in the Mojave were similarly repulsed. The Malpais Legate returned to Caesar in shame. To demonstrate that failure is not tolerated, even at the highest of ranks, Caesar ordered Graham to be burned alive. The former Legate was covered in pitch, lit on fire, and thrown into the Grand Canyon. This was the worst defeat in Legion's history. Graham was replaced by Legate Lanius, who embarked on a campaign of expansion eastward to subjugate further tribes for the Legion and gather forces for another confrontation with the Republic. Over the next four years, Caesar rebuilt his army with 14 newly assimilated tribes, creating the finest possible blade with which to cleave through the Republic. The Legion's increasing power was accompanied by a noticeable decline in Caesar's health. Once healthy, his face became sunken and sickly, his nature more reclusive. But the worst were the headaches, increasing in strength and frequency, affecting his ability to lead. Although they remained silent, the decline was visible to his officers, but Caesar denied these problems, lashing out at any queries. The first hints of what might have been the problem appeared only a couple months prior with infrequent headaches. The headaches recurred increasingly along with blanking out mid-conversation. The most recent symptom to occur is Caesar's left leg stiffening and being only able to drag it. While Caesar is untrained to diagnose himself, he's figured that he's likely suffering from a brain tumor, but defers to a professional's opinion on the diagnosis.